Okay, here we are in the corner tank again with its usual update. Red tail shark down the front is getting bigger and bigger. Not as big as the other uh, one in the boat tank. Uh, so we've got four red tail sharks. Here comes the second one now, a little bit smaller. See him right down the front center, down below. And he'll turn sideways in a minute so you can just see how big he is. Here we go. And so th this tank has the same problem that the others do. There's just so many fish in it. And uh, they're all doing well. Mostly uh, guppies and swordtails, which we have plenty of. They've bred nicely over time. Got a couple black mollies out here. Uh, the smaller ones, believe it or not. But uh, I'm very pleased that the swordtails are doing as well as they are. Uh, not Babies don't survive in either of these other two tanks. There's too many hungry fish, I guess. I'll show you the maternity tank in just a minute. But um, we do have those pearl garamis, uh, six of them in here, small. And uh, they're not getting much bigger. They're staying uh, pretty much the size they were when I got them, it seems. And of course, there's that beautiful Amazon sword plant, which has got half the tank taken up here. But it's so beautiful, I'm not going to compete with it. I'll just accept it. And then off to the right there, we have uh, the Madagascar lace plant. It's coming back again. It uh, seems to fade and then regroup. Uh, most of that reddish leaf plant that uh, we have had such success with in the background, as you see here. Uh, we've moved toward the back. When I say we, my wife does most of the gardening here. And so you can see it both on the left and the right. And there's a big bunch of that toward the back. And that plant size that you see in the back there was what I saw in the plant tank at Discus Madness that uh, he said he'd sell for $100. So I'm going to say each of these two are worth a hundred dollars. Yeah, right. Doesn't make any difference. I'm not going to do anything with them. But it uh, feels good to know that you've got that kind of investment in here, huh? Cream sickle molly there, holding its own. Tricolored shark in the front. Maybe there's that black, the red tail shark again. Uh, the plants uh, have come and gone, I and mean, some of them. Uh, it's interesting, the duckweed all of a sudden starts taking over and then I do a careful pruning of it to get rid of it and then there's nothing for a while and then all of a sudden it'll come back. I don't know where it comes from and then it just uh, gets to a point where it's blocking out the light to the tank so I have to do something with it. See some of those tetras down in front there? They are doing well. There's, I think there's three of them and they sort of Hang out, two of them hang out together, and the third one's off someplace else. So, anyway, you can see uh, quite a bit of this brick red sword tails. And you'll see in the attorney tank, I did move over the big female. Uh, she certainly looked good and pregnant, but she has not dropped any babies over there. So, I'm not sure if I should put her back here. It's been quite a few weeks, maybe four weeks, and it's a smaller tank, and she's a big fish. So. After I get through with this video, I'll probably move her back. But meanwhile, that's uh, what's going on here in the corner tank. And now we're to the bow tank. A school of Mistilla tetras off to the right. Doing very well. Move some of these plants back. As I told you last time, the Kabamba to the left-hand side there. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit for you. Wow. Really overtaken this corner of the tank, and just a day ago, I cut all those long strands that were blocking the light and replanted them in front so that now it looks like a forest like it used to. Remember when the other tank used to have quite a bit of that, and then it just faded away to nothing, and we recovered just from one, uh, one sprig. There's those three denison barbs. Still doing very well. My wife insisted on replanting everything because she didn't feel they had room to swim. That's how overgrown this tank got. 
Yeah, that school of tetras moving out of the range. And so we have some guppies here. And uh, nothing new. Uh, everything is doing just fine. Those uh, two plants you saw a couple months ago added to this tank right down there in the right hand side. Uh, they're out in the light now, so they're growing out quite nicely. And then, of course, you have that wavy leaf plant right here. That's continuing to do well. Got quite a bit of leaves on it. And so, uh, we keep that in the front. It's, a, it's really a show plant. It's a light lime green, which stands out nicely against one, that dark uh, plant to the right corner, which is a dark, uh, dark green and almost black leaves. And then you have, of course, some more of that plant I was just telling you about. It's, it's not Ludwig, I'm sure it's not, but I don't know what to call it. It's doing very well again. And uh, you see down in front there, there's that uh, log that is a hiding place for especially the uh, red-tailed shark likes to be in there. He's not there right now. But that we've got two or three of those in there because we've got a number of uh, loaches, red-tailed sharks, uh, tricolored sharks, etc. in here. And they all like to hide in something like that. So anyway, that's uh, what's going on there. And like I said, nothing very new. Oh, um, it's interesting. This tank has the Marineland uh, filter uh, E size, if that means anything to you. And uh, we recently ran out of the supply of filter pads we had for that. And I went to price them, and they're all over the place. If we go to Hidden Reef over in Bristol, Pennsylvania, just over the bridge, um, they sell them for $5.69 for a four pack. If I go down the street to um, the fish factory, exactly the same box is, I think it's $19. And so other stores carrying them for the, that kind of price range. Uh, as it turned out, they only had one box left when I went there, but uh, when they get them in, I intend to buy 10 of them uh, just because we use them up. But the point I wanted to make is, in this particular tank, for some reason or other, that filter pad it gets clogged real quick. And as a result, the flow of the water coming into the filter and going out uh, is almost up to the edge. In fact, at one time it was going over the edge and wetting the carpet underneath this. Uh, whereas the corner tank has the exact same filter and it never gets anywhere near that uh, clogged. And so I've been trying to clean that out on a regular basis, and more recently, not every third or fourth week, but rather when I see the water up high. And uh, just the other day, I cleaned it, and one day later, it was overflowing again. So I don't know what that's about, why it happens in this particular tank and not in the others. I just uh, don't know what that's about. And so if anybody has any insights, like I said, we're going to and buy a whole bunch of boxes but again when you're paying into the teens and dollars on those uh, that's not something you want to buy a lot of but for 569 I mean literally Hidden Reef gets them in by the pallet and they put the pallet out with a sale sign on it for 569 and for that I'll buy as many as I can and so I'm trying to get a month out of them by cleaning them a couple times uh, but at a dollar a pad, even, or a dollar and a half a pad, whatever that heats out to. You don't want to overdo it, right? And I just love watching those uh, Tetris going back and forth here. Ray always enjoyed having a school of fish that schooled, and when they traveled, it just was so beautiful watching them. So just like you're seeing here, that would be one of the things that whenever we get together, we sit and watch. And I must admit, I still miss Ray terribly. It was a lifetime friend. And uh, whenever I'm working on tanks, I think of him. He's right here with me. And so I hope that you have a friend like that in your life. 
and that you can enjoy a friendship even in the passing that we all are going to do someday. Huh? There's that tricolored shark right there. He's a beautiful fish, it really is. I haven't. Uh, I haven't had them over time, but uh, we've got, they, they live long. I mean, uh, some of these fish come and go. Uh, these sharks, both the, the tricolored shark here and the red-tailed sharks, have lasted a long time. So I'm very pleased with that. And there's two of them in here. And they really are beautiful fish, as you can see. A couple of neons coming across. Not many left from the dozen or so we had at one point in time. I replaced those when we got a chance. Get a, they didn't have any when we were there just last week. But uh, when I got them at a decent price. Now, a decent price for neons, uh, $2.59. That's uh, getting close to a buy price. Under that is a buy price. Above that, $2.98 or more, I hesitate to buy them. But, like I said, we're doing well. There's some uh, rummy nose coming across the center. They have not grown up in size at all since I put them in there. don't know what that's about. But that's the way it is. And, uh, like I say, when I bought them, I, I thought they were bigger. <laughs> you get home and you look at them and say, wow, what happened? How come they're that small? And so you can see some of them swimming with the tetras. There's two of them right there. I'm sorry I'm moving the camera so much, but trying to keep up with what's going on here. Okay. A lot of sword tails in here. Very pleased that all the plants and all the tanks seem to do very well with that fertilizing program. As you can see here, if I were looking at somebody else's tanks like this way, I'd be very jealous of their success. Like, hey, how'd they do that? Here's that maternity tank I was telling you about. Uh, just put all blonde guppies in here. Here comes the big female now. She still looks pretty pregnant, but she's not dropping any babies. Very skittish. Uh, she hides all the time. Put some food in there. She finally responds to the food. But you can see how her gravid spot still sure looks like she's ready to have babies, but She's not letting them out. Not sure how long they can hold on to those. A lot of babies in here, as you may be able to see as they go around. A lot of protective planting for the babies. And they seem to be doing okay. I'm trying to use small catfish in here. And I've got some Ocelinus, uh, Ocel, Ocel something uh, catfish just the other day. Put three of them in here, nice and tiny. And uh, all three died, no time at all. So this does not lend itself even to small catfish. So I call it the maternity tank, but I don't know if you can hear the thunder in the background. We're having a big storm coming through right now. And here's the office tank. Black mollies are doing very well. As you can see, one of the clown loaches, they were both out here just a second ago. They're doing very well also. Moved most of the
there's the two clown loaches. Tempted to put them out in the boat tank where there's some snails that need to be eaten. But at the same time, they're doing so well here. And originally we lost those clown loaches in the boat tank to ick. I moved most of the sword tails out into one of the other tanks. But as you can see, the guppies are doing well here. And the black mollies continue to grow. I was concerned originally that they weren't getting very big, but they're getting to adult size now. Plants are doing well. You can see that blue electric blue ram is uh, holding his own. Here's one of the clown loaches. Trying this without a tripod so I can move. And I don't know if that's going to be distracting or not. My hand is shaking, I don't know why. These guys think they're going to get fed. It's them all excited. Interesting, the big lyre tail molly is doing well, and one of the females is a big one. I think they were the original two. There he is, just to the left down the bottom there. And there's the big female, right dead center. Yes, I know. There's too many fish in here, but uh, that's a challenge. <laughs>